Hi friends, host Eric here, host talking with famous people, and I'm here with Steve-O. I didn't realize Steve-O was here, but Steve was here. He's an ENFJ from the exotic land of Europe. And, uh, anyway, I'm here today to talk a little bit about these things on this list. Type understandings, talking about big five, anechrom, four types, cognitive functions, and the issue of mistyping. So, type understandings. So, first of all, let's talk about the Big Five briefly, which talks about uh, people being descriptively scoring on five scales: openness, uh, extroversion, um, conscientiousness, agreeableness and neuroticism. So the an, the anagram or I know, what's that I think it's called an anagram is ocean. No, it's uh what's that called? I forget what the word is, but it's not an anagram. Anyway, um it's ocean. So the big five is purportedly descriptive of humans as they express on these five scales consistently and people score differently on each of these scales. Now the, the problem with this methodology is you can establish scales like that in other words you can, you can make a test and then test the results from that test as correlations against other things and you'll always find the scores on a given test will correlate with some things and not with others pretty consistently because after all the only correlation that's actually being scientifically established there is between a test score and certain other things it's not between the person and so the, one of the things that motivated this video is this this article here which explains why people don't understand uh, cognitive functions and and it makes a legitimate objection here which I think ought to be made when we're talking about types we're misunderstanding cognitive functions really it's not about types it's about manners of attention and taxonomy in the human experience in a, in a finite way that it counts for everything and explains things mechanistically in a way that makes good rational sense it's an elegant model now we can do work off of that model that's a varying degrees of concreteness away from the conceptual framework in the same way that we can do work off of the test score to show that there's a correlation or something but that's not very meaningful in the, the instance of the test score because it's what you'd call absolutely relative which is to say it's absolute relative to the thing that it's comparing against namely the test score which is as finite a thing as it can possibly be it's a it's a coalescence of a lot of different test questions down into a certain a certain numerical identity that then correlates to a, to a set of meaning just like the machine code of the meaning making is uh, is exposed in that as as absolute but meaningless whereas the machine code in the other is meaningful but relative so in other words when you're talking about cognitive functions you're talking about a definitional matrix and you're talking about a taxonomy and you're talking about a rhetorical tool that can be used to understand how different people behave to label certain kinds of language certain kinds of justification certain kinds of persistent persistent behaviors that are displayed or visible to you the, a way to divide the hours and minutes and seconds of the day into kinds of attention rather than simply the general mush of being. So is this useful? Absolutely. Is it supported by science? Well, what do you mean by that, supported by science? And the reason I ask this question is because let's look at this article here. Uh, okay, so this is by Jessica Stillman. Forget Myers-Briggs and latest Facebook quiz. There's only these four personalities in life. If you want any personality type, there's no strategy of choices out there. You could opt for Myers-Briggs test in the corporate world or go with one of countless Facebook and BuzzFeed quizzes that promise to be your true soul in the form of your spirit animal or Harry Potter analog. 
but fun as they may be, none of these options is scientifically valid. In fact, up to now, psychologists generally insisted there was no such thing as personality types, but a new study has examined no less than 1.5 personality, million personality tests just changed all that. For the first time, research has shown that when it comes to personality, the majority of us really fall into just four basic groups. All right. Psychologists have long been skeptical of personality typing. We're all bundles of traits like extroversion and agreeableness. We all fall along a spectrum, plus our personalities change mightily over time, all of which means makes it difficult to nail down meaningful groupings. Okay, what's the problem with this paragraph? It ignores the fact that there are relationships of proportionality, exclusivity, inverse proportionality, whatever, between different kinds of being. So if I'm extroverted, I'm that's contraindicative of introversion, presumably, right? Except that's what that's what you would say on the on this the ocean scale, the big five scale, which says, well, you know, if you're you score high on extroverted, then you're extroverted. And if you don't, then you're introverted. But the reality is um, introversion isn't the absence of extroversion. It's an alternative to extroversion. And the thing is it, it's more meaningfully understood as a manner or an approach towards energy that people by and large who are who are highly extroverted are energized by interaction in the world that makes them want to continue that until their physical body says uh, you can't go any further whereas introverted people will be filled up with that and will need to go back and recharge those are different approaches to the same the same set of stimuli. They're not, you know, one is not the absence of the other. A low score on extroversion is not introversion. If you're still, you could still be extroverted and get a low score on it, which means it doesn't give you very much energy, right? So understanding the mechanics of it, it reveals that this, that the model of of ocean of the big five is flawed it mistakes things for other things neuroticism maybe you could say the absence of neuroticism but it depends really really distinctly how you do describe neuroticism is ideation that's not uh, negative or doubting in nature still neurotic uh, what which you're it's passing judgment implicit in the thing, right? It's revelatory of its own judgment of towards TE. So this four types thing is built off this notion of ocean, uh, the big five. And I'll get back to Enneagram. I shouldn't have put it in this order. So let's look at this here some more. Uh... There are these four groups. Average. These people are high in neuroticism and extroversion, while low in openness. The most common personality type. Reserved. This type is emotionally stable, but not open or neurotic. They are not particularly extroverted, but are somewhat agreeable and conscientious. Three. Role model. These folks score low in neuroticism and high in all other traits. They are good leaders, dependable, and open to new ideas. Four. Self-centered. This group scores very high in extroversion and below average in openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. In everyday life, we call these people jerks. Okay, so... <laughs> <coughs> so they're talking about... Uh, the, the pattern of data points. Uh, if you plot all these various scores on Big Five tests, what do the pattern of data points show? Um, but what we don't know, first of all, they, they do mention that people's personalities change over time and certainly the, the way that people display changes over time um, but what they fail to point out is that I might change over time but I'm still distinctly identifiably the same personality that I was in a younger incarnation of myself nobody's going to mistake me for a entirely different human being even if they didn't see, even if they were blind, they couldn't see my face, or let's say they had to just interact with me via, via like, um, blurred image and uh, voice altering, um, pitch altering software or something. If they knew me well enough when I was a child, they'd probably be able to, to discern that I was the same person as an adult. 
uh, certainly if they were to be aware that be made aware that I was the same person they they would see how the current incarnation of myself grew out of an earlier incarnation that it was not um, just some wildly different incarnation of possibility that a person might be so there is that reality that people's personalities develop over time and I would suggest that this four personality type study is actually describing four levels of development or stages of development that people go through and if and that the most developed stage is the least uh, is the least common you know if in fact cognitive functions are correct then they're not inconsistent with a descriptive metric that tries to that tries to to taxonomy all of human all of uh, third party descriptors into uh, five things but you see cognitive functions is doing something better than that it's trying to be a first party incorporator ocean is trying to deny the observer we want to make a scientific instrument where the observer doesn't matter that we're describing something that is is objective external something that we can all look at and know namely this test result but that the, the leap there that the test result is actually describing something that is exit internally that's where the flaw comes in and it's not it's your the late the correlations are all between the test result and the data points outside not anything else and it's all presumptive of an, the ability to understand anything is an absence of an observer but every person who might ever use that thing hi delilah come on in are you recording yeah i am i'm making a video about types of stuff that's fine i just have a quick question uh -huh. if i were to give you some cash right now hello would you be able to give me some edibles by today or by tomorrow I think that might be illegal, Delilah, so absolutely not. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, you, you're just talking about food, regular food? Yeah, regular. Jack in the Box? Yes, like I can do that. Food. Yeah, I can go to Jack in the Box and get you some edibles. Edible food, because you know, you're notorious for getting the inedible food. I've done that many times. I brought you back wood, I brought you back bricks. Yeah. And, and I, I said, to... I heated them up for you, and you're like, that's not good enough. Uh huh. Okay, well, um, anyway, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes if you eat too much of this edible food, though, you can really, uh, kind of, like, not have a good time. I guess yeah. you should remember that. It might make your stomach upset or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, types and stuff. All right, so that's just what I need to do. All right, cool. I'm starving over here with all these wooden bricks you're giving me. <laughs> right. Cardboard boxes. It's a big, it's a big journey. The nearest jack in the box is many miles away. Yeah, it is. Okay, so just be aware of that. It's not like it used to be where it was very close by. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But there's other possible ways you can get if you want to. If you're not feeling, if you're feeling like, ah, I'll spend a little more than I should, we can get delivery. Oh, it's possible. It's, it's like, I'll talk to my friend about it. All right, cool. All right. So anyway, enough about our food problems over here. Um, so Enigram. Enigram says, let's break this down. Instead of breaking it down by these descriptors of your behavior, are you conscientious? Well, conscientious according to whose scale? Yours or mine? Um, conscientious according to what's ideal? Well, who the fuck says that? You know, is conscientiousness always a better thing? It would seem to correlate with virtues when you hear it described, but um, they're only virtues to the extent that they're virtues to you. If I'm overly attentive to that stuff, then it would be a virtue for me to be less so. And where exactly the the line ought to be drawn is, is a tricky one. Openness is a little easier. I mean, people should be, being open means being trusting. And again, that probably has more to do with attachment style than it does to do with uh, personality type or or a quality of personality even particularly it may be viewed as a quality of personality in the sense that it's what you're gonna run into again and again but it presumably if it's damaged then it can be healed to some extent and people can develop out of that so those factors are, are critically important in considering type as well and if you don't have those in your frame you're not talking about a holistic model of personality then and 
you're not accounting for the fact that we have to incorporate definitional or reason-based metrics as well as empirical or uh, science science shit, you know, which is much more limited in its utility when you're talking about something as philosophical as consciousness. Okay, so uh, cognitive functions are better because they incorporate the observer, so I'm not just some indescript scientist executing an algorithm on somebody else. I'm a person with his own agenda, like everybody else in the world. And that's something cognitive functions acknowledges that Big Five pretends to, is not the case. I'm utilizing this protocol of a cognitive function scaffolding to analyze things for my own reasons. And you're learning about it and utilizing it for your own reasons. And it doesn't ever exist or get used by anybody except that it is used by somebody or thought about by somebody or manifest by somebody. So pretending that things are otherwise, we can reduce humans to uh, set and static scores that are meaningful correlations to other things because we can establish repeatability of those correlations over time while ignoring the fact that it has no deeper meaning besides a direct link between a test score and a thing is is insane. Uh, now onto the issue of mistypings before I wrap this video up with any with asking Steve if he has any comments after my little rant here but uh, a lot of people mistype themselves or are mistyped by others. I hereby want to reject the idea of somebody being a fake whatever. People are mistyped, and they're mistyped sometimes because they're willfully mistyping themselves, and sometimes because they don't know any better, but regardless, it's not like anybody is maliciously out there mistyping themselves to intentionally spew misinformation about the type out into the world. They're not doing so maliciously. Some people are very attached to their, the idea of themselves being a certain type because they see type as a mantle one wears or a character one uh, attains. It's, it's not any such thing, and it's why it explains, this explains why it's backwards to think about things type first. You should think about things function first. In other words, in any given moment, a person is going to be is communicating with you, for example, is going to be communicating in some ways and not others. The way I'm communicating right now is both very abstract and very TI heavy. It's parsing. It's definitional in nature. It's F -E, explanatory. F -I, a little bit of TI, a little bit of NE, and a lot of SE. And from sensors that might elicit that sort of, of making fun of me because it's too... It's so like it's fancy talk, right? It's too much fancy talk for, for a lot that. of TE efficiency. <sighs> Kimberly. So uh, Kimberly comes in with some good FE, like uh, Eric busting there, which generally plays well because I'm the type police. Everyone likes to see the type policeman get kind of like beat down by his woman a bit. Uh, all this TI, all this TI. Anyway, that's what I want to say about mistypings. There's some people who are very attached to the idea of being a certain type, and for those like people, like Brittany is to ENTP. Like Brittany is to ENTP is an example. Yes, she will be fe featured on an upcoming episode of Type Police at some point. Uh, so, regardless, um, <laughs> what are you doing, making faces? <sighs> Okay, regardless, um, this is an ISFJ. But you might not think so, just from looking at what she's doing right here, you'd think, well, she sure is, uh, like, like, narcissistic, looking at herself like that, but this is totally not normal for her. She normally never is in camera frame at all. So that's something that's important for me to remember, is I'm watching one or two chunks of a video or two and uh, saying, you're under arrest, but, you know... It, it, it could be not a representative clip. If I were to watch this clip, just see Kimberly doing this stuff in the in the camera, I might conclude FE, but I might not immediately conclude ISFJ, right? So, Steve-O, you got any thoughts after this little uh, this little talk I've given on types and stuff? Go ahead, Eric. For analogy. <laughs> thank you for being here and listening. I appreciate it, Steve. And thank you at home for watching. And don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Bye, honeys.